Welcome to Hardcover Feedback. I'm Brandi Smits. I'm Tracy Hill. And today we will be discussing A Dirty Job by Christopher Moore. Charlie Asher, a neurotic and anxious hypochondriac who hates change, confronts the challenges of being a widower and a single parent when his wife dies of a freak medical condition on the day his new daughter Sophie is born. If the normal life struggles weren't enough, Charlie must also deal with his new job as death. Okay. As nap time approached, Charlie looped through the neighborhood and headed up through Washington Square Park, where people were reading and lounging in the shade. A guy played guitar and sang Dylan songs for change. Two white Rasta boys kicked a hacky sack around, and people were generally settling in for a pleasant and windless summer day. Charlie spied a black kitten sneaking out of a hedge near busy Columbus Avenue, stalking a wild McMuffin wrapper. It appeared, and he pointed it out to Sophie. Look, Sophie, kitty. Charlie felt bad about the demise of Bear the cockroach. Maybe this afternoon, he'd go to the pet shop and get a new friend for Sophie. Sophie screamed with glee and pointed to the little cat. Can you say kitty, Charlie sh said. Sophie pointed and gave a drooly gr grin. Would you like a kitty? Can you say kitty, Sophie? Sophie pointed to the cat. Kitty, she said. The little cat dropped on the spot, dead. All right, so a dirty job by Christopher Moore, who apparently Christopher Moore is like one of the funniest adult authors ever. And this is the first one that I've read by him. And this is the first one I've read too. Unbelievable. I just, that's what I got to say. I loved it a lot. See, okay, you started out eager to read it. Is that fair to it's say? It's got a and little skull baby and a bassinet on the cover. Well, I like the cover okay. too, but I then, looked at it and got excited. But I was leery because it's humor writing and mm -hmm. that's hard. It is it's hard. It's really hard to as, do that as well. We've, as we talked earlier in Solace, yeah. sometimes it's really difficult for books to be funny, yes. no matter how hard they try. And I read that one first, it's so true. I was a little skeptical coming into this one, especially given that the premise could, it sounds, you know, the bare bones of it sounds really bleak. And, you know, the guy's wife just has their first child and then she dies. And then he sees this strange person dressed in green that nobody else can see, apparently. And then Charlie, poor Charlie, finds out that it's his job to start acting as a grim reaper for people. And that sounds, it, it could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. But it didn't. No, it didn't. Okay, just want to state that. It didn't. It got bigger. I did wonder where it was going because mm -hmm. uh, it just wasn't clear from the deck of copy or from the beginning of the book, like, where the heck is this thing going to spin out to? That is true. And then it got bigger, and then it made more sense. And then it got kind of scary, but it was funny. I He's, agree. Yeah. Like, I think that this is one of those books that has no small characters, like, mm -hmm. uncreated. Every character in this book that has more than, like, you know, a hi, I'm walking down the street line is well-developed, and you understand exactly what they're doing, mm -hmm. and it's not just, you know, for, it's not, like, stupid for comedic value moments. Everything has a reason. Yeah. Like, even his crazy neighbors, he has two old lady, single lady neighbors, and mm -hmm. one of them is Russian and one of them is Korean. Yeah. And they are walking stereotypes. Now, a lot of the times when you have walking stereotypes, you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. I get it. You're making fun of them because of their ethnicity. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. Ha ha ha. But it was so much more than that because you knew about the characters and it was, it, it blended. It wasn't like a standout. It's not a yeah. slapstick story. I thought that was the, that's important to note. It's not like gratuitous. It's, yeah, it there's isn't. a reason, and that that was surprising to me because I was dreading that that it could have gone that yeah. way easily. It could have really just spilled over into ridiculousness. But yet there was an internal logic to the story. The characters who kind of acted like stereotypes were actually really fully formed individuals in themselves, mm -hmm. as were the the goth teen who works at the shop where Charlie works and the ex-cop he's you know he was cop-like in the ways that many people might think of one 
but he was his own guy. He was an right. individual. He wasn't a two-dimensional thing, even though it's typed out on paper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, everyone was fleshed out, and the big bad was really well sketched out, too, exactly. even though they were portrayed to be somewhat ridiculous, too. And I, I don't want to give away what they no. are because it's That's really surprising. There's a lot um, of stuff in this book we can't talk about, yeah. which is, that's the hard part because we want to say more to make you understand why it's so much better, but there's a lot of stuff you just have to roll over yourself. Like you got to, right. you got to take yeah. it in yourself. You got to absorb it. <laughs> and and it, just hearing someone explain it, it might sound, it can be confusing to be sitting with the book and reading it and absorbing it yourself and being able to follow it and all the pieces do fall into place. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre the way he's that just, the story did just he's really talented. fall into place. He is, yeah. I would be inclined to read something Me else too. of his, certainly. And I do have to say, I listened to this in audiobook format and it was read to me by the celebrity Fisher Stevens, yes. best known as the friend of Steve Gutenberg in Short Circuit movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just love when celebrities read books so. to me. It's just very awesome. And he did a really great job. So those of you who are inclined to listen to audiobooks sometimes, this was a really awesomely executed audiobook. So I don't we don't ever really point that out very often. And I listen to audiobooks no. a lot. And this one was very well done. And I highly recommend that you give it a shot if that's your, you know, your prerogative. So yeah. good to know. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's do our little rating here. What do you want? What do you say about this one? Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> it helped me. The book overcame my initial skepticism in a really good way. So uh, I give it three solid stars. I was just really bowled over by this book and. The characters, the concepts, the humor, it was so effortless and like I would I would read this book again and again and again like I, and I've recommended it to a bunch of people and to me mm -hmm. that's that's top of the line so I give it four stars total the whole shebang one of my favorite books yeah. okay. thank you for watching hardcover feedback we'll see you next time